We're now going to look at heat emergencies. Two main groups we're talking about here. The first sign of a heat emergency can be heat exhaustion, and the second one being heat strokes. Let's look at the first one, heat exhaustion. This is where someone's body temperature is starting to rise. They're starting to get very restless. They'll uh, start sweating a lot and feeling very, very uncomfortable. They may feel a little bit lightheaded, a little bit dizzy. Someone heat exhaustion, we need to move them to a cooler place. We need to move them into the shade. We need to sit them down. Maybe just um, get a, 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 some glass of water and get them sip water, not just drink loads and loads. We could also get a bucket of water and a wet flannel and just to cool them down gently, maybe remove clothing, definitely undo any tight clothing. And just try and relax them as much as possible. Use of fans, things like this, this is fine, just to cool them down. And once you've actually got their body temperature down to a reasonable level, what we can do then is just rest them. You don't want them to go back out into the sun or into the heat again. The more serious version will be heat stroke. Heat stroke is a serious medical condition and will require emergency medical treatment from paramedics. The problem here is the whole thermostat structure of the body has packed up. The person's temperature is rising and they have no way of actually controlling their temperature. The main thermostat will also in the brain will start to try and find ways of controlling itself and it's just not working right. And what it will do is it starts cutting down blood supply to non-vital organs like the skin and the person stops sweating. What will basically happen then is because they're not sweating, they're not letting the heat out. Um, they become unconscious very quickly and their temperature rises very rapidly. Someone with heat stroke, we must rapidly cool them down. We can use um, spray mist, we can use towels, wet towels or hoses to actually keep the temperature as low as possible. It can take 15, 20 minutes to actually cool someone down with heat stroke. But the most important thing here, we must have activated the emergency medical services because this person can go into cardiac arrest, they can have severe problems and we need to get help as soon as possible. We're now going to look at cold emergencies. Another name for this is hypothermia, and hypothermia can start when the body's temperature drops just two degrees below its normal. Now hypothermia, uh, and a common place for it to happen is when someone's been immersed in water. If someone's been immersed in water, then the, water, the heat from their body is taken out 20 to 25 times faster than in air. But it's not just in outdoor type settings where this can be a problem, it can also be a problem in the home. It's quite common for the elderly who are only heating one room or maybe trying not to spend money on their um, uh, heating bills to actually end up with hypothermia even within the home setting. Somebody with hypothermia, start with, we need to also make sure the scene's safe and uh, everything's all, all secure. In this example here, we maybe we've pulled somebody out of the water. Now one thing worth remembering with all of these things is never quickly heat the person up. If we heat them up too quickly, then we can cause them problems maybe taking him from a totally wet environment to put him into an extremely hot car, then this can cause illness as well and possible cardiac arrest. The other thing is because water is drawing heat away from the body really, really quickly, then if possible, maybe remove any wet clothing. The example here may be just in a, a snow type environment or frost environment where he's got himself very, very cold. He's conscious. If he's conscious, we can still talk to him. If he's not conscious, we need to do a lot more we need to make sure that the breathing is fine. Now, different ways of actually keeping people warm. You can use um, normal blankets, or it's quite common for people to have the foil type blankets. These are uh, very small, easy to carry around in the first aid kit, and they open up to be a reflective um, barrier uh, and actually reflects the heat back into his body. So if we've got somebody in this situation here, he's very, very cold, we want to communicate with him, we need to get the blanket underneath. Now remember, a lot of the temperature is lost through the floor as well. It's not just up high. So we really need to get just as much underneath his body as over the top. So we've laid the blanket out on the far side. We can just, just straighten your legs a little bit, cross his legs over. I'm just going to roll you towards you and then tuck the blanket underneath. So just roll him towards you a little bit. We can then lay the blanket underneath important to get the blanket underneath him because it will be a barrier between any of the moisture and also keep him warm. I'm just going to roll you back. That's fine if you come back this way. Once you've done that you can just pull the blanket over. Tuck it in on the other side.
You've got it underneath the head as well, that's good. And you can tuck it right round. Once you've done that, you can use a conventional blanket. Lay that over. And also, tuck it as best you can on the far side and also close to you. So what's happening now is any of the heat in his body from either underneath or on top is being reflected in towards his body. No new humidity is coming in uh, because the foil will act as a barrier. The top blanket here is also there to keep the heat in. We can still communicate with him, talk to him. If there's any way we can maybe put something over the top of his head as well, uh, any jumpers or anything like that, just to keep his head warm because a lot of heat is lost through the head as well. Final little thing we just talked about with hypothermia, if this is, is a result of something that's maybe snow or very cold temperatures, just do a look at other things that maybe you could be suffering from things like frost nip or frost bite. Frost nip is really where the skin starts to freeze and there, because it's in a blanket situation here or if you just have it on your fingers, you can just pop your hands underneath uh, your armpits and that will just keep your fingers warmer. Frost bite is where the whole of the body's tissues freeze right the way through. If it was an instance where someone had frostbite, we want to try and keep them, uh, if you have to walk on, say, frostbite and feet, well, that's, you have to do that until they get to a place of safety. We don't want to rapidly rewarm those either. And in any case with frostbite, with hypothermia, it's always an uh, ambulance is needed to take them onto hospital.